artistic Not to anyone specifically, but to my inner God, you know The one that's gonna be a master The one that's more than a rapper The one that's an educator The one he travels with concepts He's got the mindset expansive He understands that his time combined with travel and concepts Makes his mind convex Sort of like when you look at a brain scan Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. This is Comics Today, a show that we on do on Wednesday to celebrate the best day of the week, that being New Comic Book Day. And it doesn't always have to be a new comic. It could be a new-to-you comic. And a little bit later, we are going to be going to the chat to see what it is that you may have picked up either from the LCS online or just locally. I want to hear what it is that you may have run down or picked up. But as part of this show, we typically have a guest or two that will help me to make sense of something that is happening in the world of comics and collectibles. And we are going to have a couple of guests on that are going to help me tackle a couple of topics. A few things don't quite make sense to me. And these folks are going to help me out. If you are someone that regularly tunes into the show, you may have noticed that the intro music changed. My cousin, Brandon Isaac, has put out some uh, some new content. He's put out some new content. This is actually an older song, uh, but one that I decided to leverage called Nothing Lasts Forever. And it is linked in the description of this video. If you guys want to check it out, I encourage you to do so. Uh, he, he is an incredibly talented individual that puts out music, does spoken word, poetry, the whole nine yards. And I reached out to him the other day and was like, bro, can I use one of your songs? And he, he agreed. And so now you are going to start to hear Nothing Last Forever from North Star. It's the name of the group that he is part of specifically for this song. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that intro. You will also hear it on the outside, on the outro as well. So, uh, I will, let's go to the chat real quick. Let's go to the chat to see who's all up in here and what you guys may have picked up. Uh, frog brawler, loving that, loving that wall, uh, says, he says, uh, I will tell you, um, I was staring at that wall today. I did a, a short video thing on Instagram and I was staring at those books. I realized that uh, there was a book missing. That is not the full run. It's not the full run of, of Weapon X. I'm in the process of putting together the full run, but I ordered a book that is not on that wall. And it wasn't until everything was up that I realized that uh, I ordered this thing. It had been delivered six days ago and it wasn't to my house. So I went to go searching for this book and uh, it is nowhere to be found. I, I somehow put in the wrong uh, information into hipcomic.com, which is where I purchased it from. And uh, I don't know where my book is. <laughs> it was, it was, it's issue number 76, a really awesome black cover. I was uh, pleased to have found a copy because it's, it's not a book that is uh, heavily graded. And uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I'm going to be able to find this, this book someplace. I don't know where it's going to be, uh, but fingers crossed we can track it down. Uh, but though that wall in many ways represents not new books, but new to me books, pretty much all of the Weapon X stuff back there is relatively new. So uh, thank you, Tina. Definitely appreciate it. As I mentioned before, you guys have maybe seen these in uh, in videos recently. Um, you know, this is one of my favorite story arcs, and I'm using uh, the, the down market, if you will, to pick up some really cool stuff. So that's that's what that wall represents. Steve, how you doing, brother? He said, picked up 16 books and two variants. Then my shipment from my comic shop showed up with another 14. <laughs> brother, you have a lot of reading to do, sir. You have a lot of reading to do. Uh, I will tell you, I am, I am in the process of moving my pull list from my comic shop to a comic shop. I, uh, I visited Nirvana in Tennessee uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, met with the owner. And I, I think I'm going to end up moving my pull box over to his shop and, uh, you know, let them do the fulfillment and all that kind of stuff for me. So thank you, Liger Style. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, how many G's does your cousin have in his name? Zero. He has zero. <laughs> <laughs> zero zero g's but a lot of a's he's got a lot of a's his last name is isaac there's a lot of a's in that name <laughs> but no no g's curling through uh let me see that wall is whom wait don't tell me the word x there you go 
So I, I, I released a reel earlier today and it was it was basically DMX. It was DMX taught and I and I was showing Weapon X. And, uh, you know, I was wondering if people were going to make the connection. Sure enough, people did. Uh, Trev, how you doing, brother? Superman 2, Vanish 5, World's Finest 13 and 3 cover buys. That's what's up. Shadow, how are you? It's good to see you. Uh, nope, that's a Wolverine wall, says Fantastic. Scrolling through, scrolling through. Uh, infamous Iron Man, uh, number one, 9.8. That's what's up. Uh, he says, playing Marvel Snap for the first time. Yeah, I, I have not ventured down that path. I think uh, Wills Pertasio may have done some of the work for those cards, I guess, uh, but I have not played it. I've not played it at all. Uh, snag the Submariner issue number one, 5.0 in a Secret Wars number eight, nine point four. says Carlos. Congrats to you, brother. Certainly not new books, but definitely new to you. Uh, what is that? Receive Spawn 301, the Virgin Todd McFarlane signature series 9.8. That's what's up. Already sent it off to uh, to another signing. That's what's up. Uh, double six. Fingers crossed, brother. Fingers crossed for you that you get that book back. Double signed at a 9.8. Keeping my fingers crossed for you on that. Herman, how you doing, brother? Picked up a couple of cool books today. Darth Vader 32, Doctor Strange 1, Batman 1. Uh, there you go. Couple of cool. Oh, Superman 2. I see that on the end in Raza Ghoul. Raza Ghoul. Scrolling through, seeing what you guys are talking about. Gotta love that Weapon X origin story. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, man, it, it again. I've read this story arc probably four times. I've probably read it four times at, at least once as a kid and definitely several times as an adult. And it is just, it is just solid. It is solid. No doubt about that. Um, scrolling. To <laughs> hey, man. That that you know that started to be my joke earlier today. So Doug says didn't buy any comics today, but I offered Joe three times what he paid for his X Men books. Still waiting for an affirmative response. I I have a feeling, sir, that you are going to be waiting quite some time for him to get back to you on that Silver Age X Men books. Uh, I think he I think it said he paid like twenty five cents for them or something like that. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get an answer on that. <laughs> That's what's up. I'm scrolling through. Uh, Love Weapon X got high grade. Uh, yeah, man. I, I I will tell you, brother. Um, I, I'm digging the comment except for the double G. Uh, but I have multiple copies of this entire story arc in the 100K collection, and I'm literally pointing over my shoulder here because one of the boxes right behind here contains. Uh, a couple of runs. Uh, I, I found a, at least one bundle in the 100K collection that was basically the entire run just together in, in a shrink wrap, uh, essentially is what it was. But I found multiple copies in the collection. Unfortunately, I don't think that I could send any of them in and get them all back at a 9.8. And so it was just less expensive to go this route. Um, just time, effort, shot on goal, that kind of thing. So that's what it was. Scrolling through, um, seeing what else people are talking about. Turbo Todd, how you doing? Started to pick up on Daredevil, graded numbers 18, 192, and one, I'm sorry, 247. That's what's up. Congrats. Not new, but new books to you. Uh, <laughs> if a wall could make a sound, it would be that sound, sir. No doubt about it. Uh, also got Fantastic Four 55.0 signed by Stan the Man. Carlos, you, sir, are spending a lot of money. You, sir, are spending a lot of money. I hope that you are not buying those books off of eBay, maybe, versus like a wonderful app like Shortbox. Just throwing that out there for your consideration i think our, i think our buddy tina picked up a really cool book i don't know if tina has uh, spoken about that but she sent me a photo earlier today of some goodness that she picked up and we talked about or we spoke about the uh the benefits of of patience as a virtue so there you go scrolling through um didn't get anything today says lager style tomorrow i hope tomorrow is a better day for you sir scrolling through some of the comments here uh, picked up a few more Alex Ross Timeless variant covers. Uh, there you go. Congrats to you, Chris. It's good to see you, brother. No doubt. Uh, went to the local comic shop, uh, lo local comic show this weekend. Packed house. I thought that everybody had gotten out of comics, deuces. 
I thought that, you know, with the thing with, you know, prices kind of tanking, I thought that everybody got out of comics. Is that not the case? Are people still actually buying, reading, collecting comics? Interesting. It's, it's, it's interesting. I thought everybody was done with that, especially with the movies tanking and all that kind of stuff. Uh, scrolling through, uh, not a chance to get to the LCS recently because of car issues. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed that your car issues are resolved and you can pick up your books soon. Scrolling through, uh, <laughs> it's all good, brother. Yeah, I, I have to talk trash. That's all I'm doing. Uh, Warren, Raw is not bad at all. Nothing wrong with it at all. Scrolling through some of the comments here, seeing what it is that you all may have picked up at your LCSs or if you got a new to you book. If you had an opportunity to read something today that you thought was good, let us know what that is as well so we can put that on the top of our reading stacks. Scrolling. What did Drifter get? I didn't see that comment. Where's Drifter? Uh, there are a lot of comments. So I, uh, what is that? Came across a great deal on some Kirby goodness. A copy of the Forever People number one. Uh, it is it is sitting right over there. I literally put a DC book in the bin and I put it right in front of Forever People issue number one. I think it was a, I think it was a nine point or nine point two. I can't remember the grade. I picked it up from A One Comics. A One Comics had an auction. And uh, it was there, I don't know, it was, it was one of the books on the wall. And then I picked it up for a decent price. Really, really cool book. Scrolling through, uh, Mad About Millie, number one, is new to you. Where's Chuck? Where is Chuck and Mark when you need them? Because that is right up their alley, Tina. If you have not seen, sent that sweet goodness to those two gentlemen, Tina, I would encourage you to do so because they will absolutely celebrate with you. No doubt about it. That is right. <laughs> I am buying more. I need to calm down. I'm going to tell you, man, potentially now is the time to be contrarian. Potentially now is the time to be contrarian. No doubt about it. Just because uh, prices are prices are favorable, man. Not Now is the time to buy. Not when stuff is getting super hot. I literally did an, an interview with somebody yesterday, and that was the point that I made. I spoke about red ocean, blue ocean, and I was like, now is the time to get in. I am not. I am not Robert Rojo. I am not attending the wonder cons. I have a new philosophy when it comes to cons. Uh, and, and it, it involves me not going to, <laughs> so no, I will not be there. Is it WonderCon? It's not WonderCon. It's, um, what's the other con? It, it's in, it's a different one. I thought WonderCon was Anaheim. It's, it's the one in, uh, Orlando, isn't it? I think that's the con. I can't something con, of course. I can't remember what it is. MegaCon, maybe, maybe MegaCon blue ocean. Now is the, oh, talk dirty. Crazy eight. If you are not talking about the original, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. Uh, but yeah, man, there there are some opportunities. I remember I was in a gym. This is a couple of years ago. And I was having a discussion with a guy that was thinking about buying a copy of Daredevil issue number one. It was atrocious. It was it was an ugly, ugly copy of that book. It had rust on the staples. It looked like a mouse had gnawed on the bottom of it. And I was trying to persuade this person not to buy the book. It was atrocious. Uh, I don't know if they ever did, to be honest with you, but I think now uh, things are favorable. Things are favorable. Oh, OK, I got you now. So I, in my head, I was thinking Megacom because I think that that's this weekend. That's what everybody keeps asking me if I'm coming to. I have not been to WonderCon. I've only been to WonderCon once. Um and uh, I had a good time. I had a good time. I hung out with the folks from CGC. They got me in, in there early, so I didn't have to stand in line. That was cool. Uh, but no, I will not be at WonderCon or Megacon. Uh, no, I will be at uh, Shortbox Live. I will be at Shortbox Live. We're going to be doing this show live from uh, the main stage at uh, at their, their con on May 7th. So if you guys are in the vicinity of uh santa clara where this thing or silicon valley where this thing is going to be held bay area uh come hang out and i'm basically going to be doing the same show uh theoretically from from the main stage i have no clue what the setup is but we will attempt to replicate this show there all right speaking of um this show i think this show was a recipient of the of one of the comic book community awards this year and i'm i'm very uh proud of the fact that i was was able to win uh, uh, several cool awards. I think the channel is one of the the most winning 
uh, one of the most winning channels out there uh, when it comes to these awards. And so I want to, I'm, I'm struggling here trying to find the right thing to share with you guys, but I wanted to share a little bit of news regarding the awards upcoming. And this is a really cool animation that uh, Brian put together regarding the uh, comic book community awards. Unfortunately, the, the sound did not come over, but the details here are wonderful. It is, it is a, a program that essentially recognizes content creators. And so uh, there are going to be some announcements that are going to be coming out. I think nominations will open up in May. If you have a YouTube channel, I encourage you to, to, to get involved. If you have uh, channels that you enjoy watching, I encourage you to get involved. Uh, I encourage you to nominate these channels. Let your voice be heard. Let the community know and these content creators know that you appreciate the, the work that goes into this, right? So uh, I've, I've spoken to several content creators uh, today, uh, several of them, and I can tell you uh, things are tough. Things are tough for a lot of content creators right now. Uh, for, for lots of different reasons. So if you have a favorite content creator, I will tell you it will go a long way if you if you take the time to nominate them for an award. Even if they don't win, it goes a long way to say, you know what, we appreciate the work that you put into to creating content. And it, maybe, maybe it's not content. Maybe it's just they have uh, a nice mustache or a nice head of hair or a beard because I think there's awards for that kind of stuff too. Uh, but get involved. Get involved. That is my PSA for today. Tina's like, I have a few channels. <laughs> Tina's like, I have a few channels. Tina is like the, the blue wrench of blue wrenches right around here. She, she is a, a pillar of the comic book community. No doubt about it. Melissa's up in here. I appreciate it. Melissa. Check it out. I appreciate you stopping by and, and just leaving the comment behind, right? Because sometimes I will tell you, uh, f we, we as content creators are people, right? Many of us have uh, full-time jobs and, and other responsibilities. And uh, some days we have really tough days, man. You know, sometimes you put out a piece of content that has a mistake in it. Uh, sometimes people don't uh, watch the content as, as much as you would want them to watch. Sometimes the, the feedback that is left on the video is, is negative and it, it drags you down. And so uh, it is it is helpful when people just say, thank you. Hey, what you released actually helped me. It goes a long way to offsetting some of that other stuff. And I will tell you, it also feels pretty darn good when you win some stuff. And that's what you see back here. It is uh, all of my awards, all of my awards from the last couple of years, fingers crossed that I can continue to, uh, to put out good content that teaches people stuff that helps people. And as I explained to somebody the other day, my job is not to tell you what to do. My job is to give you some things to think about, some things to consider, give you some information, maybe that you didn't have access to so that you can make an informed decision for yourself, right? Never substitute my judgment for your own, right? Now, if you make a good decision and you make some money or you find a a book that you really loved. And I want all the credit for that. But if you make a mistake, that's on you. That is your problem. That's what, <laughs> that's how we, that's how we like to do it. Um, scrolling through, there he is. Mark, how you doing, brother? It is good to see you. Uh, watching your videos uh, over the years has helped me with my FOMO. Brother, I, I'm glad to hear that because some people will say I incite their FOMO. They will say I incite FOMO uh, which is kind of sort of true. I mean, it's, you know, I, I encouraged somebody earlier today. They were like, when I watch your video, when I watch your CGC video, it makes me want to go digging in my bins to find these books. I say, go after it, go for it. Cause you already own it. Go dig it. Uh, but before you spend your heart on money, you definitely want to, to pause, give some thought to it and make sure that that is the right thing for you. All right. So, um, we are going to be doing some giveaways. We're going to be doing some giveaways throughout the show. I think each one of my guests that is going to come on is going to have a trivia question and they're going to ask uh, you the trivia question. And the first person that is able to respond is actually going to be the winner. And so I'm actually going to throw out the first trivia question. The first trivia question is this one. What is my cousin's name? What is my cousin's name? I will take first name, last name, the gentleman that gives me the music for my intro and outro. What is his name? If you can tell me that, you will win a nice stack of books. Hello to neighbor Neil. Hello, neighbor Neil. It is good to see you. All right, scrolling through. There, oof, oof, some of you are on it. Some of you are on it and you are able to... <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. I am so glad that the Canadian got that wrong because the shipping to Canada is very expensive and now times are tough. So I'm very glad that the Canadian got it wrong. Well done. It is not Vinny. I do have an uncle named Vinny. However, uh, Philtastic. Philtastic is the first name that I see up there followed by Tina. <laughs> Steve White says Tucci. <laughs> Two, two G's is not the answer. Bob is not the, not the answer. <laughs> ben, you guys are hilarious. We should have done wrong answers only. Maybe that's what we should have done. So as I mentioned last show, I have a massive stack. This is just a part of it. A massive stack of books that somebody sent me, and we are just going to bundle some of this stuff up. There's Heroes in Crisis, Firefly, uh, Firefly blank cover infinity in, infinite crisis. Here we have some of these, uh, I don't lenticular, some of those lenticular covers, uh, Batman lenticular cover, several books. So I'm going to put together a bundle, uh, and I will be sending out bundles to people. Phil Tastic, you are the winner. Is that? I thought that was shiny foil for a hot second. I think there's like two of these. So Phil Tastic, make sure you send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. And yes, I do have your email ad or your, your address, but send it to me via email so I can keep it for my records. Uh, you are the first winner of the night. Uh, my, my wife. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You guys are funny. All right. So, uh, the very first thing that I want to talk about is, is something that it, I, I'm struggling with it. I am struggling with it just a little bit, just a little bit. All right. So, so news came out regarding Sandman. Some news came out regarding Sandman and you all know who sent me the, all the news about Sandman. Some people are very predictable, right? So, uh, the Sandman, uh, season two Netflix casting for four characters from comics. And so this, this article that came out a few days ago is giving us a little bit of preview into maybe some of the things that are, that are happening. So the Sandman season two will feature some new faces and we've got a clearer timeline of when the next season will begin and finish production. Uh, what's on Netflix has learned that casting is underway for four characters from the comics. It runs down who they are, delirium, destiny, Wanda, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Filming will kickstart in June of 2023, possibly on June 24th, which is my birthday. I absolutely made that up. Uh, before we do a deep dive into uh, what the new characters will feature in season two, uh, we should quickly note that Netflix still isn't calling the renewal a season two, but rather more episodes based upon multiple volumes of the characters. That does not make sense to me. So, so for the longest time, people kept asking the question, when are they going to renew season two? When are we getting season two? When are they going to announce season two? They, they cited all of the people that watched Sandman in their annual report. Like they touted the success of Sandman and they still did not announce a season two and technically still have not announced a season two. They are simply saying more episodes are coming kind of like they added. I think it was one or two episodes at the end of season one. I guess they're just going to extend and add more episodes, which is maybe weird. But maybe they're doing it on purpose. Maybe they are being a little contrarian uh, for whatever reason, maybe to get people to talk, maybe to just to differentiate themselves, maybe to get some, I don't know, it, but they are choosing not to do this. And we'll see whether it holds true or whether this is just a short term three thing. Uh, so it says from these four characters and their descriptions, it appears that the show will diverge slightly from the comment, uh, comics. And it goes into detail as to how this is actually going to transpire. And then the article goes on to run down, uh, the various characters and, and their backgrounds. I am not going to drill into this. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but what I will encourage you to do, what I will encourage you to do is to check out the links in the description of this video. The reason that I say that is that uh, over, I think like, like over the last three years or so, Doug Bratton has written several different articles examining Sandman from several different points of view. He has created several articles that look at all of the key first appearances, which book they appear in. Uh, he has speculated as to what they may do with season one, possibly followed by season two, et cetera, et cetera. He is, he has a, created a, a wonderful roadmap in a series of 
of blog posts that I want to encourage you to check out on ReggieCollects.com. I have linked three of those blog posts down in the description, and I encourage you guys to uh, to check them out if you have a moment. If you want to be ahead of the curve, if you want to be ahead of the curve, I definitely want to encourage you to check them out. But because I'm talking about Sandman, I have to invite our own uh, expert, if you will, on the show to talk about what it is that we just spoke about. So I want to welcome to the show, uh, Doug. Doug, how are you, brother? I'm doing great, Reggie. Doug, uh, you were on it, brother. You were on it. I, I didn't even see the news drop before you had already sent me the article and referenced the blog post. And I'm very thankful because you saved me a lot of work. <laughs> My pleasure. Well, Neil Gaiman reached out to let me know. So, <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine? He was like, "Duh, I'm about to drop some news here. I want, I want." Can you ask him what's going on with this season two? Like, what is that about? Do you think that they're actually going to eventually say this is a season two, or do you think that they're just being maybe contrarian by just adding more episodes to the existing season? What's your thought? I'm optimistic. I have no inside information on this. Neil Gaiman did not actually reach out to me. Um, but I do think that people have criticized Netflix for dropping all of their content at once. Um, and it can make it harder to digest. Um, and it can hurt the build of, of a fan base getting into it. So I'm kind of wondering if the reason they're not calling it a season two is if they're planning on breaking it up into a couple of chunks, mm. um, maybe like a few episodes here, a few episodes there. Um, and the thing that does make sense about that is they're almost definitely going to have stories from three different Sandman um, collections or, or story arcs. Uh, Dream Country, which they already featured some in season one, uh, uh, Season of Miss, um, and uh, A Game of You. So because they've announced characters, you can tell kind of what Where story gonna, arc and how they're going to weave it together. And they could. They could release it in spurts rather than as one season. So that's just my guess. That could be interesting. I mean, that that's different, right? Yeah. I mean, but at the same time, they did run up some massive numbers last year for Sandman season one. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, I think you watched it, what, at least twice, right? At I least, mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, and and they, again, they, they, they cited in their annual report uh, just how many watch hours or watch minutes they had accumulated in that period. So it stands to reason that the show is coming back. I mean, we heard from Neil Gaiman. Pete, he was like, don't worry. It's okay. Then we saw all the news that they had actually, uh, the writers had, had come together to work on season two. But again, it's just, it's odd that they haven't announced it, but maybe there's some strategery there to maybe address some of the, the concerns that have been expressed in the past. I guess time will tell what that looks like. Yeah. How excited are you for these new episodes to drop? Uh, well, I'm not super excited because I think it's going to be a while. They haven't even started filming yet. So I'm I'm expecting to see episodes probably in 2024. Um, if we're lucky, if they do a couple episodes here and there, maybe by the end of this year. Um, but so I think it's going to, it's going to be a while. It's, it's a, it's a complex show. Um, it has a lot of characters, um, visual effects, things like that, that take time to produce, right? So it'll be a while. I'm very excited that they're doing it. Um, uh, seasons of miss is my favorite of probably all the Sandman story arcs. So I'm really excited to see that on the, on the uh, small screen. It's also really expensive. I think this is a really expensive oh, yeah. franchise for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I was watching an interview with, uh, with Neil Gaiman uh, ever so briefly the other day. This is before you actually sent me the article. Uh, and it, he was basically saying I was 30 years ahead of my time when I wrote this back in the day. And he kind of pointed to the fact that when he wrote it, he had a lot of stuff that he put into Sandman. And I don't want to talk about what all of those things are, but he put a lot of stuff in there, right? That, that mm -hmm. people might call woke now. And he's <laughs> like, but I did this 30 years ago. This isn't new. 
I did yep. this a while ago and no one paid attention to me when I did it. He was like, we were so far below the radar when I was doing this stuff that no one paid attention. Now it's a show and people are like, well, where did all this come from? Well, if you go back and read the source material, it's actually all there. You yeah. just did 1989. <laughs> see what I'm saying? People yep. just didn't necessarily pay attention. So it's going to be interesting to see how, uh, when this is released, how they released it, uh, release it and, and how it's going to be received by people. Um, have you, have you spoken to any other Sandman fans out there? Or are you like the only one that you talk to and you and Neil, I mean, do you guys get together just you and Neil and talk, <laughs> or do you talk to other people? And if so, what are those people saying about this? I, I don't really, I'm, I'm in a couple of, you know, Sandman Facebook groups, but I'm not on Facebook near as much as I am on Instagram. So I'll occasionally see posts and, and see articles, but I'm not talking a lot to, to other big fans. So. There we go. Okay. Your brother's on Facebook a lot, brother. I think, yeah. I, think <laughs> I think he likes Facebook. I really do. Uh, so, so Doug, the other reason why I wanted to have you come on is because we have a little bit of an announcement, right? Um, I think I may have revealed this to maybe a small pocket of people, maybe Patreon members. Uh, but I think we have an announcement. Um, I will tell you folks that, um, we we sold isolation issue number three incredibly well. I think we changed our model for issue three, and I think issue three was successful, right? We had a smaller print run, but the run itself overall, the project was successful. And I think that that was because of all of the creators that lent support and, and the core group of people that really want us to see us continue this. I think that that's why it was successful and we're, we're optimistic about the future. And as a result of how well issue three went, I, I reached out to Doug and I sent Doug a message. Doug, do you want to talk about what the message was and what your thoughts were when you received the message? Uh, it was that issue four is a go. Um, and I was extremely excited to hear that. Um, it's, uh, it's been a lot of work and a lot of fun work, but there's ups and downs. And the reality is after issue number one with many comic series, especially indies, people kind of decide to wait until there's a trade you know, to continue reading because they don't want to invest their time and their money until they see if it's, it's going to continue. Um, and that, that makes it hard on creators to financially support and keep it going. Yeah. So I was thrilled um, with the amazing reception to your, you know, your Kickstarter, um, how much people supported it, uh, that it sold out in pre-sales and that, um, you greenlit issue number four. I, I'm excited and the, the artists are excited. Now, here's the bad thing, brother. Somebody's mother reached out to me uh -oh. and was like, hey, uh, I missed the Kickstarter. Can I can I get eight copies? And I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I have eight copies, right? So uh, with the Kickstarter, it allowed us to control the inventory and the print run a little bit better, right? Like we we, we sold... 6,000 copies of issue one, right? Yeah. So we did, we did a lot of volume with issue one, but we also learned a lot from issue one and issue two that we tried to revive or ref refine for issue three. So I I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we will have a couple of surplus so I can at least get somebody's mother copies <laughs> uh, because that was an awkward email. Like I waited <laughs> half a day before I responded because I was like, how do I respond? What do I Oh, uh, I'm guessing I know whose mom that and, I, and I'm purposefully <laughs> not saying whose mom it is because their mom might be watching the show but i was like i yeah. gotta be careful right um but that was that was a hard message to write but it was also i tried to explain to them like the why behind it here's yeah. how and why i don't have extra uh but but fingers crossed i can i can meet the demand but one of the things that you alluded to doug is that you said that the um the creators that are going to be working on the project are excited can you talk about how we are trying to do issue four from a creator involvement standpoint do you want to talk a little bit about that yeah, it's it's uh, different and pretty cool. Um, we there's two time periods in this, like you know, issue two and three, uh, 1869 and 1992. Um, and this time, Delia is doing the artwork uh, essentially from the 1992 period, and then it will transition into Chase doing the uh, the art for the 1869 time period. So we actually have 
two artists working on the interior together. And due to a suggestion from you that was brilliant, I got to say brilliant, uh, there, there's a, a kind of a, an interesting way we're transitioning from one time period to the other. And I, and I mean, I, I made the suggestion, I opened the door, but ultimately you're the one that made it happen. And I think that, that, that give and take that back and forth between us and then the back and forth between you and, and the artist is what makes the magic happen. And, and I will tell you, I, I am, I, I am excited for people to get issue three in their hands, but, but the, the point here is that we, we haven't sent you issue three yet, but we're working on four, which means that when you get issue three, you won't have as long a wait. That's the good news here. That is the bright spot. Uh, the other part is that I spoke to uh, the printer yesterday, and I do believe by the end of this week, everything will have been printed and will potentially be in the mail to me. Uh, they, they, I kept slightly increasing the print run because I had a couple of comic shops that ordered and they, they ordered more than I thought that they were going to order. So I was like, well, let me increase this just a little. Um, so as a result of that, they didn't do, they didn't print enough. And so they had to, to redo some things. So fingers crossed, we get it relatively soon. I will immediately start processing orders. And, and like I said, the good news is that issue four fingers crossed won't be too far away. Uh, Doug, do you want to highlight anything from, no, let me ask you this. Uh, have the creators read the script yet? And have you received any feedback based upon their initial read of your script for four? So, uh, I don't know who has and who has not read it yet other than chase. Um, because, uh, when we had our first meeting, there were a few characters that he wasn't familiar with mm. from drawing in issue three. Mm. So he was like, Oh, I need some designs and descriptions. So yeah, yeah. like, so I knew, I know Chase did, uh, or, or at least he was looking to see names and, and, and who was in it. Chase, um, Chase sent me his email asking for his contract. So I think, I think Chase is ready to run. But yeah, go ahead. I, I, I think you. he's ready to go. Um, totally just changing subjects for one half a second. Yeah. If somebody's mom happens to find out who those LCSs are who ordered copies, <laughs> then somebody's mom might contact and get those eight copies from there you go. Because the publisher might not have them. But the comic shops will. Yes, the comic shop. Yeah, because she she the, she reached out and she was like, I want to support you as the publisher. And I'm like, you know, and that's why again I yeah. had to take a step back and I'm like, I appreciate that. But we, we changed the model just a yeah. little bit, you know, so uh, that that that's a good idea. I didn't want to <laughs> I didn't want to say that to her. I wanted to say I'm going to try to take care of you, mom. Uh, so so we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But um, I'm excited to hear the feedback as you start to work with with Delia and uh, Chase and start building this out. I'm excited to hear the feedback. I'm excited to see the thumbnails from you guys. Uh, I am really excited about issue number four. Um, I'm excited for people to read issue three for those that yeah. haven't, like some people got in on the Kickstarter and were able to get the early read. And I think that they enjoyed it. Uh, there you go. Isolation three is going to be a great third act to an awesome story. There you go. There you go. Um, so there you go. All right. Uh, yeah. our pre-orders for that's a, that's a good question. That's a good question. Thank you. I almost forgot that part. So, uh, we are probably going to leverage the same model again, because the model that we did for issue three worked extremely well. And I think we're going to do the same thing for issue four. We need to figure out what those packages look like. So I need to crunch all kinds of numbers, Doug, and I need to have a lot of back and forth about well, what do we offer? How do we offer it? When do we roll it out? Right? Cause Doug has his ideas. I have my ideas. We tend to come together. We fight, uh, creatively in a constructive way. <laughs> and we, we, we come out with something that makes sense and makes and works. And so I would yeah. say, sit tight, give us some time. Uh, I will tell you, there's other news that we have not yet shared that we are sitting on that will be part of that. Hey, the pre-order is available. My other thing is this. I want people to have issue three in their hands before yeah. I say, hey, order issue four. Like there's got to be, you know, Doug, you know what I'm talking. There's got to yeah. be that exchange. Right. So I think that's the right way. It 
it, it's a really interesting thing because we're promoting issue number three. We, we finished issue three a while ago. It takes time to print and get out. And we get excited and start chomping on the bit. Like we know what's going to happen. Issue four, we're, you know, there's all these fun things, but we got to wait a little while because we got to get issue three out to people because it's, it's a really good issue. And um, for those who didn't get the digital copy, you know, those, I guess those who, uh, who supported the Kickstarter got a digital copy. So some have read it, but there's a lot of people who haven't, and I'm excited for them to read issue number three. And then I'm going to get excited for them to read issue four. Yep. I think one of the big things we learned was that, you know, with issue one, we had a long gap between issue one and issue two because of yeah. the time that it takes to do the artwork. And so, you know, Doug, as soon as, as soon as we finished essentially with issue three, he's like, Hey, here's issue four, right? Like, so there's always this push pull and we're just trying to manage it as best we can to maintain the momentum, but also be financially responsible as well. Cause that's yes. the other part of it. If you ask, in my opinion, if you ask a creator to do work, that creator should get paid. And so I don't want to ask anybody to do work until I know that I can pay that person. And so there is again, a fine uh, balance that we have to this thing. So Anyway, Doug, it is always good to see you, brother. Uh, it's been a while since I had you on, man. So it's, it's good to, to chat with you on camera. Uh, before I let you go, do you have a trivia question for us to throw out? Uh, yes. So, so uh, the first one to answer the question, lag is a real thing, is the winner. If you win, send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. Go ahead, Doug. Yes. What is the name of the first Sandman story arc? Oof. Never going to get that one if it, if I were in the chat. <laughs> Someone will. <laughs> Doug, repeat it one more time. Repeat the question well, one more. What is the name of the first Sandman story arc or graphic novel trade? There you go. Uh, first, first Sandman story arc. Yeah. So for those people that that supported uh, certain um, certain packages of the Kickstarter. We sent to them a digital file. As soon as the file was released to the printer, I sent to all Patreon members and those that had purchased that package uh, a digital PDF. And uh, all of those people have been sworn to secrecy uh, on threats of death if they share that PDF. Uh, so fingers crossed that that no one actually did. <laughs> Seth, Seth says nap time. <laughs> uh, Tina's was close. Oh, I think uh, Alan got it. Climbing. Comics. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, here we go. Uh, that's there you go. The, that's, that's, the that's the first, first one, one I saw. I yep. T Tina was close. Yeah. Tina was close. Sand in my Zach. That is that. No, no, <laughs> that is not the answer. <laughs> so scroll, scrolling through dream dot, 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 a uh, frog brawler. All right. So uh, it looks like Alan has it. Alan, congrats. Nice, to you, Alan. Send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. Even though I have your email address and, and all that stuff, send me an email so I can uh, bundle up some stuff for you. Well, board, do you guys even have sand in Canada? Is it, does sand exist in Canada? I hate sand. It gets everywhere. I don't know. I don't know about that. You guys <laughs> seem to escape to Mexico and, and other uh, exotic destinations fairly often. I look at travel reports for Canadians. Don't ask me why it's part of my job. Doug, it is good to see you, brother. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for the trivia question. I appreciate you. Talk soon. Take care. I don't need to ask Doug for a social media because everybody already knows where Doug is all the time. So again, uh, congrats to the two winners. Make sure you all send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com so I can bundle some stuff up again. Maybe you'll get one of these fancy lenticular covers. I don't, I don't know what you're going to get. I'm going to put together some bundles. I sent in the last bundle, I think a couple of people, no, maybe one person received a basically the one in 25 variant. Uh, it is the first 25 uh, books that come out of the box issue or, or cover A uh, gets a, a sticker that I fix. I think I sent out at least one of those to somebody that won last week. Maybe we will do that again uh, this week. We will see what, what the inventory looks like. So, so we spent some time talking about uh, Sandman, uh, and why I was so confused by what was happening with Sandman issue one, I'm sorry, uh, season one, season two, more episodes kind of thing. Doug helped me to kind of sort through it. I think there's still some unanswered questions, but fingers crossed we will get our answers in due time. So the second thing that I wanted to talk about is, is probably something else that is near and dear to a, another, uh, Bratton brother, uh, Dave specifically, uh, Shazam, this movie 
essentially bombed. This movie has not been well received by critics and has not performed well at the box office. Now, I will tell you that when you go to Rotten Tomatoes, at least last time I checked, uh, the Rotten Tomato audience score was 87% favorable for this movie. So a lot of people have seen this movie that have actually enjoyed the movie. Uh, critics, not so much. And, and the box office, again, is not looking all that favorable. So Shazam! Fury of the Gods stumbles with a $30 million opening weekend. It says uh, Shazam! Fury of the Gods open to number one. So yeah, it was number one. Uh, but did not not it did not crush it in North America. But the Warner Brothers and DC Comics sequel fell short of expectations with its disappointing 30.5 million debut from 4,000 theaters. Headed into the weekend, this movie was expected to collect 35 to 40 million dollars. So it missed it somewhere between five and 10 million, which some people say is not a lot, but 35 to 40 million potentially also isn't a lot of money for opening weekend uh, for movies historically. And I think that that historical part is important. Uh, it says, which isn't, uh, which already wasn't all that spectacular since it cost north of 110 million million uh to make and another hundred million to market and i think that those fees or those amounts are very close to what the first movie cost and that first movie reportedly i think made like 70 million dollars which is why the second movie was green lit for roughly the same cost roughly the same cost for one and two one just happened to make a lot more money overall to the tune of about 70 million dollars uh, net after all expenses have been taken into account. So the rest of this article kind of goes on just to talk about, you know, how this compares to, to the first movie, right? The first movie opened to 53.5 million. Uh, and again, this one, not, not so much. So, uh, I wanted to have somebody else on to, to talk a little bit about the, the Shazam woes and and I reached out to a guy that I think is pretty pretty knowledgeable about a lot of these things. He also brings a different perspective to things that I appreciate. So, on a welcome to the show, my buddy Chuck. Chuck, how you doing? Doing great. How you doing, Reg? Chuck, who broke Shazam? Who broke Shazam too? Because thirty million was not the target. What what do you think happened here? Well, I think you you had a perfect storm. Is what you had. Uh, you know, unfortunately. And I'm a huge Captain Marvel fan, so I'm I'm big Shazam fan, like like the other Bratton. You, Shazam's just not as popular as he used to be, hmm. you know. Not many of us. Th there's not a whole lot of us who still remember the cartoon and the live action TV show on Saturday mornings and everything, um, you know. And DC is, you know, DC is not Marvel branding wise. You know, it, it, it you know they're producing some good stuff, and it's a good movie. I mean. You know, it was a good, it was a good, fun movie, but it's not, it doesn't have Marvel's marketing clout in society. And the other thing is people just aren't going to movies that much right yeah. now. Yeah. So, so let, let's get to that last point here in a second, but some of the things that I've heard and I, and, and I want to get your opinion of this because it may resonate exactly with what you're saying. I've heard people say bad timing. They chose the wrong time to release this movie. Uh, I've heard poor writing. I don't know the, the the people that have said that have actually seen the movie. Uh, so I'll, I'll ask you your thoughts on that. No promotion was a big one. And, and if you remember, I released a couple of reels like a month before Shazam came out. Like, where is all the marketing? Like, it's really quiet out here. They should be making some noise. Uh, not supported by James Gunn. Flash is resetting everything. So this movie really doesn't matter. Folks are blaming The Rock. And they're also calling Shazam a B-list character that no one cares about. So uh, let me pause there to see what your thoughts are on that list of reasons why this movie did not perform well. Well, I, I think you're hitting on a lot of things there. You know, I, I think if Black Adam had done great mm. and tied in with Shazam like it was originally supposed to, you know, I think you would have gotten a much bigger pump for that. But you know, there, there's no tie-in, even though anybody with even a cursory knowledge of comics, they can look at two characters and go, these guys look like they're related. Yep. I mean, they, they dress the same. They got the same tailor. I mean, yep. you know, <laughs> why, why are they not together? And 
but they're not together. And and this goes back to what you're talking about with DC and DC just not, just not, not figuring things out really. The timing is, you know, March is also not the best time in the world to open a movie. I mean, Batman did really well, but it's Batman and Batman's its own, it's its own separate beast and it's its own genre. Yep. You know, here in North Carolina, it's NCAA tournament. First week in NCAA tournament time. You know, what's everybody doing? We're watching the tournament. And and they advertised the mess out of Shazam in the tournament. Did they? But I'm like, yeah, they did. They, they were they were running promos, you know, but every other commercial. So, which is great. But, man, I'm watching the tournament trying to figure out my brackets. I'm not going to go to the movie. I'm not going to drop it all and go to the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> not when my daughter's texting me every five minutes about how her college is doing and why they haven't pulled the game out yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, can't, I can't leave the screen then because I got to respond back to her. You know, it's not like I know what I'm talking about. You know, um, you, you know, you just it, it's just it, it 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 really speaks to how DC is just a mess. Yeah, right now, and you look at the overall box office for everybody right now. Mm. Nobody's doing great in the box office. But that's not that's not something that people readily talk about. They they want to they want to say, you know, it was woke, it was poor timing, it was poor writing. It, they want to blame a lot of other stuff, but they're not necessarily looking at other contributing factors, right? And I will say I believe that that the, what happened is is multifactorial, right? You said perfect storm, I I say multifactorial, same difference, right? There's a lot at play here. But what you're hitting on at the box office itself is not what it once was. Talk a little bit more about that, if you might. Well, you know, you look at the numbers from, you know, before the before the pandemic and everything hit and the numbers, as you see, there's you got it pulled up right there. 2019, you're talking 11, 11 billion dollars yep. worth of sales. And I and I can tell you our household. We weren't responsible for eleven billion dollars. We were responsible for a lot of it. Okay, and I, I mean, love, eleven I billion love dollars goes a lot of ways. Even if you have yeah. a lot of movies, it goes a it, long way. Exactly. And what you're seeing there, you're looking at that. You know, obviously, you know, 2020. You know, we're not we're not going to discuss 2020. You know, 2021, you start seeing a little bit of a rebound. Kind of the same thing there with 2022, but 2022 has really been propped up by really two movies and that was avatar and top gun yep and you take out avatar and top gun and all of a sudden you go back and it's more a, a 2021 situation yep and yep. i think a lot of what's happened is that we have changed how we i know i've changed the way i watch movies mm. you know i'm much more willing now because i'm paying all this crazy money for streaming services and, you know, again, and just speaking as someone who is busy all the time, I just don't have two and a half, three hours. I can go to a movie and more of the point, I'm not dropping. If we take the whole family, 60, 70, 80 bucks for a movie that I'm going to walk out of and go, why in God's name did I spend this money on this thing? Yep. You know, and, you know, the last movie, the last two movies we've gone to, not including, I, I went to Shazam on my own because nobody else in the family was super interested in it. And it, they're, they're, it's just, it's not their favorite hero. The last two movies we've gone to as a family where we paid full ticket price for everything, everywhere, all at once, and Wakanda Forever. Yeah. And both of those in our minds were slam dunks. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're going to go, I think, this weekend to see The, the Lost King, which is a, is our is our little independent you know artsy movie that we're gonna go see yeah. uh artsy history movie you and the wife uh yes yeah and probably kids too yeah okay okay yeah we're gonna bring everybody so but, but otherwise your, but, but to your point the box office looks very different and I think there's potentially yeah. reasons for that I think you hit on the you hit the nail on the head that the pandemic to some degree or another may have shifted people's viewing habits away from the theater you mm -hmm. see theaters uh, and I, I covered this before charging more money for better seats at the theater, uh, prices for popcorn and, and, and pop going up, uh, the, the, the proliferation of streaming apps that are out there are numerous. And it's like, if you want to watch Picard, you want to watch this, you want to watch that, you need a different app for that. That all eats away at your disposable income. Right. Uh, but Chuck, go ahead, get in there. Cause I can keep going, well, but get in there. The, the other thing is that they've shortened the amount of time movies are staying in the theater now. There you so, go. So, 
you know, uh, like we haven't seen Ant Man yet, just because honestly we haven't had time. Yep. Uh, but my spring break's coming up in about a week, week and a half, and that's where I can take a matinee time out and go finally see Ant Man. Yep. And I don't know if it's still gonna be in the theater then. Maybe well, which not. is fine. I've I've got Disney Plus, so I mean it's not the end of the world, but you know, I'm not gonna get a chance to see it. And you know, not just the superhero movies, but we'll go to uh, mention the Lost Prince. We're gonna go see this weekend. Why are we making a point to go see it this weekend? It's an independent movie. It may be in the mainstream theaters two weeks if we're lucky. Yep. And, and I, 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 there think, we go. I think that there's again during the pandemic a little bit of a war that was happening yeah. between the the producers and and the makers of these movies and the movie theaters themselves. We saw a lot of that with Warner Brothers, right? Like I think it's uh Shazam. It's rumored to be releasing digitally literally one ma- month after it was in theaters. That's kind of sort of unheard of. And that also says, well, don't worry about theater because we're going to send it to your house. If you don't yeah. think that that has a detrimental impact on people going to the theater, you're you're not paying attention. I, I personally don't enjoy noisy theaters. I'd rather sit in my sunroom, watch mm-hmm. my TV with my family and and enjoy it for a lot less money, right? Get in there, Chuck. Well, and, and and you look what happened with Black Widow, right? Yeah. I mean, Black Widow would have made a lot more money than it did, but it did the same time release. Now, I think they had good reasons for doing it. We're not we're not going to get into that conversation, but it really hurt. You know, ScarJo had a legitimate gripe. Yep. When she got after them about how much money she lost. Yep. Because of that, and you know, and you can make the same argument with you know the Wonder Woman 1984. Whether or not you think it was a good movie or not, yeah. you know, it being released online, you know, that again would have hurt how much money you're going to make off of it. And you know, I'm like you. I, I just I like I love going to movie theater, but you know what? If I'm already dropping hundred bucks for Disney Plus, yep. you know what? I'm going to stay at home and you invite some people over and we're going to crank up the grill and you know, we're going to, we're going to make an evening of it. It's going to cost us a heck of a lot less than a hundred bucks. Yep. And you don't even have to get fully dressed for it. I mean, you can stay, you know, I mean, you can stay comfortable, right? So the other thing, (laughs) the other thing (laughs) that I don't think people always consider is that the box office is down, which I think is huge, less Mm -hmm. money coming in, less money divided amongst the movies. Maybe the movies aren't as great as they once were who the heck knows. But again, uh shazam 88 percent on rotten tomatoes people that see it seem to enjoy it but the other big factor is the economy that the fed just raised interest rates i think people are also hurting financially and i think that all of these things have to be considered it just it isn't this thing or that thing or this other thing it's these things that have Mm -hmm. to be considered as to why these movies are not necessarily performing uh, maybe the way that that we would want them to perform. Not every movie can be right. uh, Maverick or Avatar, you know. Well, and one more thing with the movies, yeah. the the movie companies haven't figured out how to monetize to effectively monetize streaming yet. Yep. Streaming for those of us who have been on the line for a long time, online for a long time, and remember things like Napster, where you know we we we'd run that we'd run the second phone line for three days, download an album, um, you know. <laughs> We're still used to getting stuff either for free or for very little. And I think what the what they're finding, I know what they found with HBO Max, and I think Disney is finding out, is that you're making your money through your new subscribers. You're not making it through how many times I click on things. Yep. So I can click on Wakanda forever 25 times, yep. and that's great. It's not making Disney another lick of money. Unless I get one of the kids to buy themselves a Disney Plus subscription, yep, to add on to that. Otherwise, Wakanda Forever is not bringing any more money there. Same but thing it, we're seeing but, with Netflix. But it will cost them money. It will cost them mm-hmm. money to maintain that inventory, which is why they purged uh, HBO Max. They purged a lot yeah. of movies because the holding costs associated was costing them money. I will also tell you, anytime I go to Netflix and I'm trying to watch a show. And it gives me that prompt that too many TVs are being used. I just close it out and go find a kid and tell them to turn it off because I'm, I'm not paying. <laughs> I we, I pay too much money across too many different streaming services to give anyone any more money, right? There's only so much money 
that can be yeah. spent on this stuff, right? And I and to your point, I think that there's a lot of different factors at play. So uh, Chuck, I want to thank you, brother, for coming on to chat with me a little bit about this, maybe helping me to make sense of it. Sometimes I just like to commiserate with people, right? Before I let you go, Chuck, do you have a trivia question for us? I do indeed. So based off our uh, the Shazam weekend we have, uh, our trivia question uh, for this for this segment is uh, where does the Wizards of Shazam? Oh, what? I'm sorry, oh, oh, no. I'm too busy. I'm too busy laughing. The ultimate damn. <laughs> Uh, get off and my kids will yell at me dad turn off your tv absolutely not absolutely no, not no. i pay for this i'm watching this tv chuck i'm sorry brother i'm done this laughing is Go ahead. my house so yes this is my house um so the the trivia question is um where does the wizard of shazam reside and get his power from where does the wizard shazam reside and get his power from so we we will wait to see whether these questions come in uh, Chuck in his t-shirt <laughs> equals Sheldon. There you go. Says Demetrius Hill. That's what I don't know that I've seen your name Demetrius before. Maybe, maybe I had a good friend back in college named Demetrius. All right. So we, we see some responses coming in, Chuck. I will allow you to identify Reggie's basement. I know. <laughs> we have Herm uh, Herman uh, Bozeman. Herman. Herman is on the go. board with the rock of eternity. Herman, please send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. Herman also has two children, two uh, two girls. I have a feeling that Herman probably yells from the other room, get off the Netflix as well, because they're probably in separate rooms watching it. Uh, Herman, congrats to you, brother. Make sure you send me that email, and I will put together a bundle of books and send it out to you. Chuck, it is always good to chat with you, brother. I want to thank you for... Uh, Providing some insight, right? Perspective to some of this stuff. Uh, you, you, when we engaged earlier today, you went right to where my mind was, was that it's not just one thing, it's multiple things and maybe some things that people aren't readily considering right away. So I want to thank you for bringing that in. Where can people get a hold of you on social media, Chuck? So you can find me at Chuck Kenzie on, um, on Instagram. And, um, I've got a YouTube channel that if I ever find time to edit some videos, I'll add to, and that's uh, terrific comics and pop culture. There we go. Chuck, it's good to see you, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man. All right. So with that, we're going to wrap this thing up. Congrats to all the winners that uh, came in. Uh, if you are a first time uh, live stream viewer, throw that up in the chat so that we can welcome you properly. A little bit late in the show, but we will still welcome you. Nevertheless, the Blue Wrenches always like to see who the new folks are. If you guys are watching this and you enjoyed this show and you haven't yet hit the thumbs up button, I want to invite you right now to tap that button. Just go ahead and do it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I want to invite you to do that as well. We release content many, many days of the week. Almost every day of the week, there is something coming out either here or on Instagram. A lot of great content. I don't want you guys to miss it. As I mentioned, there's some great links in the description of this video to blog posts written by Doug on Sandman. So if you want to be ahead of the curve, potentially on speculation or some other stuff, the links are there. If you want to just go digging in your own collection to find these books, the links are there for your enjoyment. All right. With that said, we're going to wrap this up. And again, a huge shout out to, to my cousin for giving me some really awesome uh, music to use on my intro and also on my outro. Take care. Straight off meditation, we was concaving until we had that eternal dialogue that created our dialect. Now we in distinct rooms of pure souls, having them conversations, synergy and combination. You fly and we waiting, Indian style in the gold temple of greatness. When you follow the North Star, you coming for the education. This is my audio book, these rhymes are just the imagery. More like an audiographic novel or a memoir about a young MC making timeless music with his mentor. I pray I grasp my letters, nothing was meant to last forever.